Just to uh, fill you in on the timeline of things here, I met with uh, Peter Laviolette early this morning and informed him that uh, he was being relieved of his duties as head coach. Uh, right after that, I met with the assistant coach, Kevin McCarthy, and told Kevin the same thing. 0-3 is 0-3. We still got a long way to go in terms of the season, but it was more about how we played, and it was unacceptable. We don't look like a team at all, and I felt just a gut feeling I needed to make the decision. This is that story. This is the Flyers' flight plan. Why does this team, why have they hired more head coaches in the last 20 years than any other team in the National Hockey League? Why is that? Is that, is that an accurate stat? I just made it one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I believe that's the case. 11, this is the 11th in 20 years. Is it impatience? Is it mistakes? Why do you want to go back to all those coaches? There was, well, a, reason, there was a reason each time, and uh, the general manager at the time and Paul now made decisions. They felt that we needed coaching changes, and they made them. Period. You approved That's it. Those. You approved those. Of course, I approved them. Okay. But they work for the. Just they work for the general manager, and if the general manager feels he has to make a change, I approve it. It's, it's as simple as that, Howard. So it, it, it's not any more complicated. So is it mistakes? The mistakes by the organization when they hire this many? Obviously, many? it may be a mistake, but it wasn't a mistake with Peter Laviolette. He did a very good job for us, but right now we've been struggling. And we think we need a change. I'm a fan of Peter Laviolette. I think he did some very good things for this organization. It's a tough day when you have to let somebody go. But Paul felt it was time to make a change. And I would never say to Paul, you can't make a change. Ed, Ed I, I haven't talked to Craig yet. And I, I don't mean this to, as a matter of disrespect to him. But are you worried at all about the perception of an insular kind of attitude by bringing in someone such, given the fact that you guys haven't won a cup in 38 years, why bring in somebody from who is steeped in that sort of culture? What's the culture? A culture that hasn't won a championship. We haven't won a championship, but we've been in the Stanley Cup Finals a lot of times, and we've been in the playoffs a lot of times, and the culture is to win. 30 teams are trying to win the cup, and we're doing our damnedest to do it. That's our culture. And a, a, a That's our culture. A fresh perspective. No, we don't need a fresh perspective. We have a pretty good culture and we know who we're dealing with. I want to make that perfectly clear. I mean, a lot of people think that I come in and say, you got to fire the coach. No, I don't. I've never done it. I have to approve it. When, the, when anybody comes to me who is in charge of a particular department in any of our companies and they want to make a move, I ask questions, but I never, if I tell the general manager he can't do what he wants to do, then obviously I have no confidence in the general manager. But I thought our training camp quite frankly, it was one of the worst training camps I've ever seen. And I'm not talking about wins or losses. There was nothing exciting. Nobody shined. Nobody looked good. Um, I couldn't point to one thing that I thought was a positive coming out of training camp. And I personally was worried. And unfortunately, my worries were realized in the first three games, scoring one goal in each game, and looking disorganized. And if it weren't for our goalies, I think it could have been a lot worse. I come to do my job here as an assistant, and you know, it, eventually it just happened. I mean, I really didn't uh, think beyond that too much. I mean. Um, I'm happy it happened, but not in the circumstances that it happened either. I mean, I don't like anybody losing their job, and I was I was friends with uh, Peter Laviolette and Kevin McCarthy. They're good people, and it's tough. Anytime there's a change, especially with uh, coaches and, and coaches that you uh, we've had uh, you know a really strong relationship with, it's it's, uh, it's tough to see them go, and uh, it's uh, it's definitely something that uh, I wish we could have uh, averted. Oh, he's not gonna talk for uh, to just uh, uh, waste your time. He's uh, he's a smart guy. He's uh, he knows the game uh, really well, and <clears throat> you know what he wants to win. So he'll uh, he'll 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 do what, what it takes to uh, to get the, the guys going. Like I said, I think uh, changing the mindset of our hockey team. It's been a certain way for a number of years now, and 
you know, old habits are hard to break. And I think to change that mindset of how we got, how we need to play to, to be successful is probably the biggest challenge. But I think we'll get there. He's been a player. He's uh, he's been a coach for now uh, for a number of years. I think he has that uh, experience. I know. He, I think he knows what kind of style he wants to use, and and uh, he knows the players well in the room, and uh, what kind of message uh, is going to be um, well received by different guys. So, the first thing is our play without the puck's got to get a lot better, and um, I want to be a good team without the puck. Uh, you know, I believe that everybody can play the same without the puck, and that's one one thing. And the other thing is the skating for me. We got to get. We've got to become a faster skating hockey team and um, a, a faster thinking hockey team. Uh, there's a lot of character on this team. You have a great captain and a great player. Uh, and people are going to follow him. You know, he's just he's going to come around. And like I said, with the character and the players that we have on this team, I believe it's a make it for a great team. If the Flyers were going to take the initial strides toward becoming a great team, it would have to start with Barubi's first game. With Nary a practice to implement his new system, the Flyers were going to have to lean on their best player in the early season, goalie Steve Mason, if they were going to pick up that first victory. Shore is up in it. Jumps to the puck there. It's Jake Boyd. He'll line. He'll fight her. Fly right back at it from Brent Shinstead. Hey, we got a lot of talented guys. We got a lot of guys that can put the puck in the back of the net. It's just a matter of, like I said earlier, execution and, and putting that puck to the net, and not getting too cute, and uh, just going to those dirty areas. In the middle. Whitney back to Fleischman in front of the lot. Oh. Spectacular save, Mason. A goalie always is a momentum booster for a team. I think he can steal games for you, and Mays played a great, great game, and, that, and it was very important that he did, you know, for our team to get the victory. And uh, it's always nice to have great goaltending, I'll tell you that. I really believe that our goalie can be uh, uh, the best leader out there. Uh, any, any big saves he makes, or uh, let's say I do a, a mistake and he's there to back me up, uh, I kind of want to help him uh, uh, in the future and kind of make, uh, uh, make it up for him. Anytime we can get that first win and just build from there, it's it's a it's a it's a journey, and we got to make sure that our play continues to get better, and um, guys realize what mistakes they're making, and uh, try to improve on that. To be able to finally get our first win, and uh, you know, give Chief his first victory as a head coach was was great to see. And going 0 3, and there's a lot of pressure there and stuff to get a win, and they finally got one. So I felt really good for the team, and it's very important. First one's always the hardest. When you get that, that's how you get confidence. You, uh, you don't need to play unbelievable to get the confidence up. When you get a win, you start to feel good about your game, start feeling good about yourself, and uh, you just go from there. First start for the Flyers will be for Steve Despite the step forward, the Flyers would quickly realize the steep hill was not going to be an easy climb. Next up would be the Phoenix Coyotes, an aggressive, defensive-minded club who likes to bang and grind, which is right in Wayne Simmons' wheelhouse. Hey, Simmons. Hey, what's up, bud? What's going on, bud? How are you doing? Not too bad. Good. Yeah, a lot different. That's what you need. We just switch it up completely. Yeah, he's going for it, Paul. So I'm staying back. I'll be F3 to help you guys. Hey! Hey! No! Scratch that! Watch out! I gotta come once a game, you know that. Even though it wasn't mine. Yeah, I know. I just shoot in the zone. That's what you're doing? You're doing it? Hey! Hey!
lucky bounce, lucky bounce, no worries. Get it right back. Get on the inside! Get inside! Get inside! Yeah, Reno! That's your instigator, Biz! Three of us! Three of us! Out this other side! Could get a slot! The efforts of Simmons aside, and another fine performance in goal by Mason, the Flyers lost 2-1. It didn't get any better the next night in Detroit, as eight penalties led to three power play goals for the Red Wings, and another 5-2 loss. A game against Vancouver followed on Tuesday, and although it was the best Flyers performance to date, they ran out of gas in the final 10 minutes and coughed up a lead which led to a frustrating 3-2 loss. At 1-6, the Flyers weren't happy but the feeling was that they were about to break through. You know what, it's, uh, we're getting better every game. That's how we gotta look at it, and uh, it's a fact, you know, so. Uh, and if anybody knows about anything about hockey, they, they'll know that we played a good game tonight, we played our best game, and, and uh, it's a good thing coming right now. On the next episode of Flight Plan, presented by Virtual, the rivalry, the hatred, the Pittsburgh Penguins.